Happy Wednesday. It's my Tuesday. And I did not go to my meeting tonight because Tanya is out of town, <laughs> which that's my excuse tonight. And I'm gonna do a live stream, but I'm going to the pool right now because look, there's nobody at the pool. So why not go to the pool? Especially when you have a key to the pool that you didn't have to pay $25 for because you found it. So here I am at the pool. You guys wanna see the pool? This is our little neighborhood pool for all 60 condos in here. So there you go. You can see like there's a lake over there. It's one of the lakes. You see how peaceful it is? So anyway, yeah, it's so nice out here tonight. I thought, well, I'll just come out here and go for a little swim. Alex literally just got home, but he's putting like this gift together for his best friend. So he's like um, doing that. And I was like, well, then I'll go for a swim since you're doing that anyway. Can I pose this on the towel? You guys are like on the towel. So let me see what I've done so far today. Well, I had a meeting at one o'clock with some people that I had to, you guys were probably like this watching me. Um, that I had to go and do, and then um, people always like walk in here when I'm like talking, so I don't like that. So, um, so I got up real. I got up at like noon, and then I went and got coffee at Starbucks, and then I did that. Um, and then, see how th thin you can make yourself if you turtle. That's not how I really look. Um, and then I um, went and had the, the meeting, and then. I went to the post office where I, like some author sent me this book. It's always interesting to me when authors send me books with like no note or anything in it and I've never talked to them before and I'm like, okay, like, and it's totally something that I wouldn't um, probably read. Which reach out to me first and ask me like, would you read this? And I'll tell you if I would read it or not. Um, but, and then, um, let's see, and then I, came home and I made some videos and I made two, two booktube videos today. I made my booktube -a -thon vlog and then I also did my um, I did a book haul because I got my books in the mail from booktube or from book depository which like I ordered all these books that I've wanted forever and I can't find anywhere else so if you want to see, what is, like, this is so creepy that there is, like, I don't even want to pick it up. That there is a comb on this table. Is somebody doing their hair for the school pictures? Um, but, uh, like, I'm off all day long until tomorrow. If it's nice, I'm going to come to the pool during the day. I think the kids have gone back to school. So, yeah, so I did that, and um, then I made videos. And I tried to lay down for like, after I uploaded all my videos, I tried to lay down for, I did two on my main channel too. For like a half an hour, 45 minutes until Alex got home. But like, PP was being crazy tonight. He like, had to have like all this attention. He was driving me nuts. Like he was like, constantly having to have nuts. I should really put the pool behind me, shouldn't I? Like that would make more sense. So then you guys, I mean, if we're gonna have like a view, shouldn't we have like a view of a pool? You can't really see me that way though. So, anyway. You guys are like, we're not here to see you, we're here to hear you. <laughs> and that's that. And I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for dinner tonight. I'm like really hungry, kind of, I'm craving like a salad. Isn't that so funny? And um, then, Look at where my subscriber count is at on my main channel. 49997. I'll get above 50,000 and then what will happen is I'll lose 100 <laughs> subscribers. So anyway, um, the game of YouTube. It's all so funny to me. I got like really nice comments last night on my vlog about like my marriage counseling stuff. Thank you guys so much. Like sometimes, like that's really hard for me to talk about on there. Um, 
it was interesting. I was talking to Alex about like what he worked on in a session tonight, and like I don't want to get into all of it, all of it, you know, some of it's personal. But he was like, I like learning to app, to open up and ask you for what I need emotionally. So like that's a lot of what I was talking about last night. So we have a session next week together, and then I have my session on Tuesday. And um, I've been working on a lot of like grief stuff in there. Hear those birds? They're so pretty, aren't they? I love summer in the Midwest. It is 80 outside right now, but it actually feels really cool. It doesn't feel like 80. It feels like, like 65 or something. I hope the pool's not too cold. Should I see what the pool's like? Let's see what the pool's like. What does the fox say? Ding, 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 ding. My nephew loves that song so much. <gasps> it is so warm. So... Do, 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 pool. Legs in the pool. Oh, if I get it on my camera, that will not be a good thing. Legs in the pool. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be one of those synchronized swimmers. <laughs> oh my god. I would be so pissed if I dropped my camera in the pool. That would not be a good day in the life of Peter Vaughn. That's what the fox says. Ding, ding. It is so funny. Did you guys watch my snaps? I think I put it on the video when... No, because it had music on it, so I wouldn't have put it on my vlog. On the video when um, we went over, Carl and Liliana was like, this is Carlitos' favorite song. He always gets like the songs late. Like, he loves that Gangnam Style. I don't want to drop my camera in the water. He loves that Gangnam Style by um, Psy. That's like one of his favorite videos, too, which I think is so cute that he loves that video. But he goes crazy when that, that's what the Fox Says video comes on. You can kind of see my towel at the bottom. That's so funny. Mm, Dustin Daly, so sweet. He just messaged me and he said, so close. <laughs> Aww. Oh. So I'm hungry, but I'm like really feeling like a salad. Do you know what's really interesting? I don't know if this is like a flashback to my vegetarian days, but like I've been really craving salads, but not with any like chicken or any kind of meat in them. Do you guys like get chicken or ham or anything in your salads? Like I'm not really craving like that. I'm craving like, well, what's really funny is, and I did get chicken in this. There used to be this really great restaurant in Indianapolis called um, Eddie Met Salad. Um, and, um, like that movie, When Harry Met Sally, but it was called When Eddie Met Salad, because it was like this guy Eddie owned it. But anyway, and, um, they had this salad in there called the Ensalada, and they would make them in these big wooden bowls, like every salad, and every salad was like seven bucks, six bucks, they were huge, and it was like this Mexican kind of salad, and it was like lettuce, <clears throat> corn, tomatoes, had all this kind of stuff in it, and then it had grilled chicken, and then it had like this chipotle like ranch dressing with it, it was so good. But they closed down. <laughs> so now I can't get my ensalada anymore, which I'm so sad about. $25 for this pool key. They're supposedly changing, I'm gonna have to get in the pool in a second. They're supposedly changing the rules so that we can swim to eight from 11. But I love night swims, so that's why I'm waiting to see the light just came on, can you see? Maybe it was on before, I don't know. But do you see the light come on in the pool? That's when I start getting really scared. Go down the deep end. <gasps> but I want to come like every day for the rest of the summer so I can say I really got good use out of the pool. Did you guys go to the pool a lot? I love going to the pool. I don't love going to the pool and there are a lot of people here though. I'm super self-conscious of my body and stuff. So... Anyway, well, I think that's it. God, I've talked for almost 10 minutes. What else did I do today? Anything? I read for a little bit. I'm going to read a lot tonight for Booktubeathon after I do my live stream. And, uh, yeah, so I think that's about it. There's usually little bunny rabbits running out here, but there's not tonight. We have tennis courts, too, do you see? Can you see? Back there. Alex and I came last year and I beat his ass and I hadn't played in forever. 
I don't know if you guys know this because I've talked about it on here before, but I grew up like playing competitive tennis. And then like my sophomore year in high school, I had a situation where I threw my racket. My dad went down and told me to default, default the game. And I quit the team and I was just over it. It was like so competitive. Like I had played competitive tennis, but it was like very sportsman where I played. I played in leagues and things like that and, and at camps. And then when I got to high school, it was like totally a different um, situation. It was like really ugly, really nasty. Like just, it just wasn't pretty. And then like, I kind of fed into it a little bit. I mean, these kids would like, if they like lost a, like a, a game, they would like throw the racket and shit. And I did that and my dad was not having it. And he was like, he came right down. I mean, like literally like I lost for the team. And, um, after that, I just was like done. I was like, I don't ever want to play tennis again. Like, I, I, I used to play with my mom. I'd come over here and play with my mom when I was like in my uh, mid twenties. Cause my mom played tennis a lot when I was growing up. I come from a huge tennis family. They love tennis. My dad and my stepmom used to go to, um, this is going to sound so bougie, but they used to go to like the French open and the Wim in Wimbledon in London every year. And, um, the U S open, but like they're huge. My, my stepmom was number one. Um, she was the number one tennis player in high school the year that she graduated from high school. I keep on looking behind me because it's embarrassing. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm still not a very good public vlogger. So anyway, but they love doing all of that. They watch it. I mean, like, they get up on Sunday morning, the last day of Wimbledon, and have, like, the strawberries and all that. Kind of, I don't do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anybody that plays tennis anymore. Like, I don't mean like that. Like, I mean, I don't, oh, lightning bugs. I mean, I don't know any of the professional names except for, like, the Williams sisters and... I mean, I don't know anybody, you know, back then, like, as far as I go back, it was like Yvonne Lindell and Bjorn Borg and stuff like that. And I've seen some of them play in public. We used to have here in, in Indianapolis, we had, they may still have it. I don't know what they're called now. GTE tennis championships or something. But back in the day we had the clay courts and then we had something else here. And I was a ball boy for it. So you would like sit on either side of the net. And then if like a ball, like you'd like run and get it and run to the other side. That was really fun. You get to walk around like you were special, all the things. But anyway, you didn't get paid for or anything, but it was just cool. And then we would go to all the tennis players and we would have them sign it. And I remember there was this one, I cannot remember her name is, but she was like the first transgender athlete ever. Renee Richards, I think that was her name. She was the first transgender uh, sport or like athlete ever. And I remember my mom said to me, you need to go get her autograph. Um, and she's going to be super famous and she's a really cool athlete and stuff. And I remember I went up and got her, um, I can remember that right now, like sitting there and going up and asking her for her autograph and very sweet. So anyway, Renee Richards, I think was her name. I wonder if she's still around. Different world today. I was probably 10 or 12 when that happened. I got John McEnroe's autograph. I got Chris Ever Lloyd's. Chris Ever, do you remember her? I got hers. I got Bjorn Borg's. God, those were the days. That was the real summer, tennis and swimming all day long. I've, ha I've had a good life. Those were good childhoods. I guess I like associate so much like parental drinking with tennis though that I kind of struggle with it too. Like, I remember always like my parents like watching tennis and drinking a lot too. So like, I, the, it's hard for me to separate the two if that makes sense. When I would play tennis growing up, there was like a big, like do you know how Dance Moms is? There was like a big window where the parents would sit and it was like a bar and I can remember my mom would sit up there and stuff and like sometimes I think she, like she and the other moms would like have a couple like drinks and stuff while they like watched us or a glass of wine or whatever. I don't know, I just have a hard time separating. Maybe I'm wrong, I, but that's how I remember. There was a big, you, you remember the big window you could watch from up there in the tennis um, like clubs and stuff? They're playing ping pong outside over here, I love it. And then over here they're watching a movie, you can see the huge screen. Do you guys ever like to look into like people's houses and wonder like what they're doing? Like when you're driving down the road, you can see like a house off in the distance, and you're like, I wonder what they're doing in there. Are they all like cozied up for the night? I always kind of go to the evil side and think like, well, maybe they were all murdered and they're like waiting to be found. That's so horrible. The imagination of a writer. Crazy, isn't it? I always wonder like what people do late at night in their houses and stuff. Who knows? What do I do? I sit on the front porch and live stream and drive around and make videos. <laughs> That's about as weird as it gets probably for most people. All right, you guys, I'll see you in a little bit. It's getting dark. 
it won't shut off. So I just got out of the pool. I was just thinking that people probably watch my vlog and they like think like some people, you guys are very, very nice, but I'm sure there are some people out there that are like, Peter is like one of the weirdest people I've ever met in my entire life because I was like sitting there in the pool and I was like, it's gorgeous now. It's like completely the perfect night swim. Do you see? I love it so much. So I want to capture that memory. My mom and my friend Chris and I used to come up here and go swimming after I first got sober, but I was in the pool and I was doing like, um, like handstands and like cartwheels and stuff. And I do this thing where like, and I remember doing it as a kid, like real young. I can, maybe I can do a badass handstand in the pool. Okay. And flips and all kinds of shit. I mean, I grew up swimming always to the neighborhood's kids pool. And then my dad had a pool, um, city pools. I mean, I was always in the pool. Loved it. Loved to dive. Loved to do cannonballs, everything. But anyway, um, I'm doing all these handstands in the pool and I still think of it. Like, do you guys do this sometimes? If you're, if you're an adult and you it will admit to this, like think about it, okay? But you still play games with yourself like you did when you were a kid. And so, I'm sitting in the pool and I'm doing all these handstands and stuff. But like, I stand up when I stand up and I stand up like this. <laughs> like, I, I'm in the Olympics. And like, until I can get it perfect and stand up, I can't leave. Like, that's my rule. Like, it's so OCD, isn't it? That I have this rule that if I can't stand up perfectly, then I can't leave the pool. <laughs> it's like I'm coaching myself to be an Olympus, like an Olympic, uh, what do you call it? Like an Olympic, uh, <laughs> I don't know, what would you call it? An Olympic uh, handstander in the pool? <laughs> Is that a sport even? It was so fun though. I had such a great time. I love night swims. They're the best. And then you go home and you like put on your pajamas, but you still smell kind of like chlorine. I love that. Um, and then you like watch a scary movie or something. I'm like, yeah. that's what summer's all about. I love summer. All right, talk to you guys in a little bit. Hello, you guys. Oh my God, I have my pool key in my car. If it is nice tomorrow, I'm going to go to the pool. So, what have I been doing, you might ask? I feel like I need some leave, is what I feel like. My head is killing me. Um, I don't think I have any to leave in the car. I really don't want to run back inside. Well, I need some anyway, so I'll run to Meyer and get some and do the vlog. And then... That's it. And then I'll listen to my audiobook. Um, because I need to get some to leave anyway. I had a very long live stream. I did two hours. And then I, um, sat outside. My phone was like, um, I need to plug in my phone actually. My phone was like updating like 18 apps. And like, people were telling me about like, have you seen this update? Have you seen that update? And I hadn't seen any of them. So I was like, oh, I guess I should probably update my apps. I'm like really bad about that. So, and then I was charging my phone because it was like on 34% or 40% or something like that. And I was like, well, I want to listen to my audiobook for a while. So I should probably, you know, anyway, it doesn't matter. So I was sitting out there and so I started reading and I started reading Jennifer Smith's Windfall because that's one of my books for, um, the book that I bought for the cover for my, oh, this thing is already open. Why is it open? And, um, I sat there and read 94 pages in like 45 minutes. I couldn't believe I read so much. The book is fantastic. It is so good. I mean, it's not like a deeply meaningful book, not yet, but it's like a good read. It's like a fast paced read. And, um, which I love books like that. And then, She captures like some moments. She's like talking about like they're at this party and it's like suffocatingly hot in this apartment that's like a two bedroom apartment. And um, that like outside it's snowing so much and there's like all the wind is, or all the snow is like piled up in the wind sill, in the windowsill like in Chicago. And I just love like the whole visual of it, you know, like imagining that. And um, 
And then her, like, brother, or, like, who's really her cousin, but it's her brother, because, anyway, I don't want to ruin it for you, but anyway, he's, like, in the bedroom, like, in, in talking to his boyfriend on the phone who goes to school at University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. The whole thing is just, like, I love details like that, right? When you can just, like, see the character standing there, and you just feel like you're, like, watching it. Like, I love getting into a book, you know? And, um, she walks in there, and he had, like, a green, uh, like, Kelly green sweater on that he had taken off, and he had, like, a Superman t-shirt underneath it, like, with these Clark, Clark Kent glasses on, and she said he looked more like Clark Kent than Superman. I mean, it's just small details like that that I think make a book for me so fantastic. But I am more of, like, a character and, like, environment-driven reader than I am like a plot driven. I mean, I like plot, but like, I don't have to have fast moving plot like that. Does that make sense? Like, I really like to watch, to read interactions of characters. So yeah, so I did that. I ran out there for like 45 minutes. And then I was like, I'm going to pump out some reading tomorrow because I am off tomorrow and Friday. I like scheduled, scheduled my days this week so that today I had a meeting and then Thursday I have like five hours of meetings that I have to do because I'm helping this person put together this like very long like coaching weekend that I'm not doing but I'm helping them with it. I get paid for consultation. So, um, like a lot of people always wonder, they're like, what is it you do? I get paid for consultation. So I'm con con consulting with them like on how to put these together and what I would do and what exercises to do and then they put it together and they run it. So anyway... Um, so that's like a five hour meeting because they're doing it this weekend. And, um, which is fine by me because I get paid for the time, you know. But I made it all so that we could do it. They were like wanting to meet on two different days. And I said, well, can we do like just bump it all out on Thursday so I could have Wednesday and Friday off? Um, and then I have to do like one wrap up, one hour of like a wrap up on Sunday. Um, like after it's all said and done, they don't. whatever. Who'd care? Coffee on a Sunday. I mean, it's not a bad gig if you can get it, and I love doing it. So you know. But anyway, so that's what I did. I read and then um, updated my phone. Crystal Ball and I are watching the same teen drag show on YouTube, and she just texted me and said, it's out. We were waiting for it. It's called Drag Arena. It's another one of those shows, like Showdown, uh, Drag Showdown. And she's like, the next episode's out. I just watched it. I was like, how was it? Did she text me back? Not yet. So, um, yeah, I'll probably watch that when I get home. Now I don't really have a headache. Now I'm like, do I really want to go all the way to Meyer? walk into Meyer. I was thinking about making this a little bit of a shorter vlog tonight so people can catch up because so many people are like, I can't catch up with your vlogs. My head is really hurting now. I just don't want to walk all the way into Meyer. Do you guys ever feel like that? I mean, we're going to talk about first world problems. was going to bed tonight but I came in and he was like on his phone and he like got off of it really quick and I was like what were you doing and he was like nothing and I was like what were you doing he was like I was reading the comments underneath your videos and I was like you were and he was like yeah and I was like which videos and he was like your vlog and I was like why were you reading comments on my vlog and he was like I was just interested to hear what people had to say because we spent so much time together this weekend I said well I talked all about it and he goes, you did? And I was like, he goes, I mean, I don't watch your videos. And I go, I mean, listen, I, my husband loves me. But he might watch a 10-minute video. He is never going to watch a 50-minute vlog of me talking about our life together. He just isn't. Tanya doesn't either. Tanya doesn't watch my videos either. Um, she's like, I look. She's like, you're my best friend. I see you every day. I don't need to uh, watch these videos. I mean, she sometimes watches the funny ones, but, like, it's boring to her because she's, like, with me all the time, you know? So, um, he was like, people really leave nice comments about us on there. And I was like, yeah, people like us as a couple, Alex. And he was like, I just didn't realize that people like think of us that way. And I don't, you know, somebody commented, I was, so I was going through the reading. He was like, somebody thinks you're a slut. <laughs> this, I'm going to talk about this in my video tomorrow on my main channel, but Kathy, she put Peter as a slut. Thanks, Kathy. 
And all these people were like, that's so mean and stuff like that. And he goes, why does she think you're a slut? I go, Alex, I don't know these people. I said, I don't know these people that leave these mean ass comments. I mean, I don't know who they are. I don't know why they're trolling my videos. So anyway, and he just kind of laughed. He was like, well, did you say something in your video that would... I go, no, it's just a troll. <laughs> he totally doesn't get any of the YouTube thing. But it was interesting because somebody commented on there and they said, I would think it would be very hard to be, like, married to or, like, in a relationship with somebody that was a vlogger. And I think it really is, you know? It's like... It's hard because, like, I never... I, cause I, so I said to him, I said, well, do you want to be in more of the vlogs? I said, I don't ask you anymore because you just don't like to be in a lot of them. And then last week, you said, you a couple days ago, you said you would wanted to do a video. Because well, I like doing the videos in your main channel when we do, like, unboxings and stuff like that. Those are fun. And the Q&As are fun. And I go, well, do you want to do a vlog? And he goes, I just feel like those are, like, captured moments. And he's like, you know, I don't necessarily want to be in those because I like to live my life instead of having somebody record my life. You know, he's like, if I wanted to be a vlogger, I would be a vlogger. Alex has very strong stance about this shit. Look, I have tried to get him to start a channel forever because he could do, like, style and music and fashion. He loves that stuff. Like, he does all of the videos and all the style videos for his, the, the salon. He does a lot of, like, social media. He does it all for the salon, you know, that, like, he does all of their YouTube videos and everything. And I'm like, Alex, like, you would, people would love it, you know, and you would love doing it. You love talking about it. And he was like, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> we used to make videos together, and he never had an issue with it. I don't know what changed. He's weirder about being on camera by himself than being on camera with me. Like, he really would never want to be on camera by himself. And what's so funny is, like, his two other brothers are totally, like, if I was, like, married to either one of them, they would totally be opposite. Like, Fufu, my brother-in-law, Juan Carlos, who we call Fufu, oh my god, he would want to be in every vlog. Like, he picked, do you guys, if you watched it from the very beginning, do you remember he picked up my vlog and, like, walked around the room and, like, recorded people? Like, he would, like, want to be on the vlog. But Fufu and I are very much alike. Which is probably, to some degree, why Alex and I work, I guess. I don't know. And then Carlos would, but Carlos just would never understand what was going on. Because <laughs> I think he's been hitting the head with too many baseball balls or something. Or he boxes, too. So, <laughs> I love Carlos, but you know boxers. So, um, I don't know. It would be interesting, you know. His mom loves to be on the vlog. And, of course, Carlitos loves to be on the vlog. And Liliana likes to be on the vlog. I really, like, if you had asked me five years ago, like, if you had a vlog channel, do you think Alex would be on it? I would have said, oh, yeah. Like, it kind of surprises me that he... I think what he doesn't like is that he's not in control of it. Like, he doesn't know, like what I will end up talking about or whatever. And if he could trust that, like, I would edit that out or... But, but he doesn't want to be edited, so that's not it. Because, like, whenever I say I'll have to edit that part out or whatever, if he makes some disgusting joke, which, thank you, everybody, have totally enabled, because he... Now you guys... He knows that you all love when he makes his dirty jokes, which just reinforces all of that. But, you know, it's like... Um... Like, he doesn't want to be edited. He's like, if I'm going to be in your videos, I want to be able to be myself. And I'm like, well, absolutely, you know? But before, I was kind of scared because he'd say something, you know, dirty. <laughs> like, when we did the Asian treat unboxing and he said the milk looked like <laughs> sperm or whatever. I was like, oh, Alex, you know? Which, like, that doesn't really embarrass me. But, like, I, it embarrasses me for, like, imagining somebody out there watching that. Like, who is that? You know what I mean? Like, whatever. It cracks me up if we're just sitting around the house, you know, but it's different, I guess. I don't know. Do you guys remember, like, at the beginning of this vlog? I vlog this is my 201st day vlogging. That is crazy, you guys. Do you remember, like, at the very beginning, though, like, it really bothered me that, like, um, I'd be like, well, Alex doesn't really want to be on it, and I don't, know. I don't give a shit now. If he doesn't want to be on it, don't be on it, you know? I just don't, I would never want, like, me vlogging to come in the way of, like, our relationship, which it hasn't, you know? He's totally supportive of it. What's funny is, like, um, he doesn't watch 
that's not true that he doesn't watch all my vlogs because he said something to me like when we were on vacation he was like I was going back and I was watching like when we were in Miami I wanted to see the hotel and I was looking you know and he was like I'm really glad that you're recording this and it's funny because like it, he'll even though like he'll, he'll say those things like I don't want to be on the vlog he'll say to me like you should do this like he's constantly texting me ideas of videos to make or he'll say like which I mean he doesn't know about youtubers but other kinds of videos or he'll say like oh like we're we're waiting for the you know the uber you should go or that it wasn't an uber it was a shitty bus but whatever you should go and record the whole resort so that you have that on you know for memory and then if people want to go see what it looks like they can go in there and they can see what the resort looks like which was a great idea you know but he's the one that comes up with that so like i mean i don't think of that stuff always i'm kind of like da 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 so anyway, it is 68, it did get cold tonight. I said earlier that it was like 80, but now it's like really cool outside. <sighs> I don't want a pickle, I just want to ride on my motorcycle. People really liked hearing about our website. That was really kind of funny to me. I thought that response would not be good. I thought the response would not be good. But you guys were really cool about it. You're like, oh my God, I love hearing about this. It was funny because I was reading through the comments and what were people asking me? Like people asked me about some other things. Oh, people were asking me about like uh, cheap things that my mom did with me as a kid. Okay, so I'll tell you one of the things you can do. You can Google make sugar cookies, just plain sugar cookies, and then Google, there's a book, and I wish I knew what it was called, but it was like, maybe it was like a book she bought at like a fair or something, because it was like, had those things, those loops on the top of them, but it had all these things that you do, like coloring bath water, like she always, like my, I never took baths just in water, it was always like food coloring, what color do you want it, blue, orange, green, that's really how I learned about my primary colors and secondary colors, she taught me that, you know, yellow and red make orange, and then I could have orange and whatever, I always played with, I was reading this in a, um, in some book that I was reading the other day. They were talking about this. And I thought it was so funny. I think maybe, was it the Julie Murphy book? I don't know. But anyway, um, like I always played with those spaghetti colanders, like in the bathtub. Oh, y'all come, came for me on how I talked about quinoa or Quan Wee or whatever. <laughs> I'm never buying that shit again and talking about it on here. Everybody was like, Peter, I love you so much, but it's called Quan Wee or Quinoa or I don't care. It does, it's food. It tastes good, I like it. <laughs> but anyway, and you don't have to say I'm sorry I offended you. You guys didn't offend me, it was cute, I liked it. But um, I should like, uh, Hold on a second. I should look at the, what the comments were really quick. Hold on. On the vlog. Oh, here it is. I have it up. Um, let me just pick out. Oh, my God. Some of these comments are so long. Shelly loves the Goosebumps books. Michelle said this was so deep and raw. Thank you. April said it's a, marriage is a process. Okay, here it was. Iridescent Daybreak. Please do a video on the cheap things your mom did when you were a kid. I love that stuff. And I know there is a whole frugality audience on YouTube you could appeal to with just one video. I should probably do another video on that. Oh, here it is. 50 Hellcat 2. Being married to someone who is a vlogger on YouTube has to be challenging. Sex drive goes as you get older. I think that intimacy is achieved in many ways. Can you please call my man and have a long talk with him? I love him dearly, but he shows no one, including me, any attention. I love that Lord has said. These vlogs make me realize that 2017, when I read that, I was like, amen. You know, I'm not a big believer. Okay, I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, but I'm not a big believer that sex drive does go as you get older. I don't know if that's really a physical thing. I, mean, I can't speak for women because I'm not, but for men, it doesn't go away. And I don't know if it's really a physical thing that it does go away or we convince ourselves we're not as interested in it as we were. Does that make sense? It's just because it comes secondary to the other things that are priorities in our life. You know, it's just not as, it's not that big of a deal anymore. But I'm going to tell you right now, you know, I've worked with a lot of couples in my 
career, and I don't care how long they've been married, you know, I'm telling you, there are some 70-year-olds out there still getting it, and um, when people can say, oh, that's gross, or whatever, blah, 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 well, hey, it's, God, I hope I'm still getting it at 70, we're all going to be 70 at some day, you know, and, you know, I think a lot of people, I have friends of mine that literally, it's an unspoken rule that they do not have sex in their marriage, that they have a sexless marriage, and I've been in sexless, sexless relationships, but the thing that sucks is you get to a point where then you, like the tension of not having had sex for so long or the intimacy is like, you don't know, like you're so afraid to like break that barrier of going back and doing it again because it's so tense and uncomfortable and awkward that that keeps you longer from having sex. But I've had men and women in my office, 50 and 60 year olds, 40, 50 and 60 year olds say, I have a physical need, okay? Men and women, not just men. I have a physical need and I don't think my husband or wife has any intention of ever having sex again in our marriage. What do I do? Like, I, I have a need to have sex. And if they're not going to have sex with me, it's not, you know, okay enough for me just to, I, I want I can't imagine this being the rest of my life just never being physically intimate with somebody again, you know? Like, do I leave them for that? Do I just masturbate? Do I cheat? What do I do? And, you know, I think, like, I, like in weird ways, I kind of understand that, you know? Like... And I remember when my mom was sick, she would say to me, can you just comb my hair? She always wanted me to comb her hair. And she'd say, you know, Peter, she'd say, I've been divorced. And my mother was not somebody that, like, slept around. She just wasn't. I mean, like, at the beginning, she, like, dated some guys. But I don't even know, really. My mother was somebody that very much believed in sex and marriage together. She just very much believed that. I don't care if it was your fifth marriage. She very much believed that. And, um... Like, one of her fears was she said, I know I'll never get married again. And I said, why don't you think you'll get married again? And she said, because men today want to marry, why would they want to marry a 55-year-old woman when they could marry a 35-year-old woman and she'll give them all the sex and I won't have sex with them until we're married. She's like, no man's going to marry me with that unless I meet him in a church and he's probably corny as hell and I won't want anything to do with him anyway. I was like, okay, mom. So anyway, um, I mean, and there is some truth to that, you know? But I think, like, she, so she said to me, you know, like, my parents got separated when I was six. She passed away when she was 64, so she was sick that last year. So, you know, like, 60, 55, 60 years of not having another human being touch you physically, like, that's a long time, you know? And I remember she said to me, um, will you just brush my hair? And then I would brush her hair and we would sit there and watch TV and she'd say, it just feels so nice to have somebody else just touch my head, you know? Like, maybe that sounds weird to some people. I don't know. But, like, I, I really understood it, you know? Like, I really got it. Like, we take it for granted, you know? Sometimes, like, I love to just, like, Alex thinks this is so corny, but I love to, like, hold his hand in the middle of the night. And, like, what's so funny about it is, is it's, like, as corny as he thinks it is, like, when I go to hold his hand, he, like, grasps my hand tighter and, you know, like, I love that. And, um, I don't know. I think physical touch is important. And I don't think that physical touch has to be sex. It can be brushing somebody's hair, giving them a hug, laying close to them, having your legs overlap while you're watching a movie, you know, holding hands in the car, anything. It doesn't have, and it doesn't have to be romantic physical touch, you know? But I think that would be very hard. You know, one of the other things that my mom talked about was that, like, so people were bringing her meals before she went to the hospital. And, like, I was not, I don't have any regrets with how I handled the situation. I wasn't the best son. I, I mean, it makes me sound bad, but, like, I'm just not a good nurse, and I just wasn't dealing with my emotions well, and so put me and my mom in a house together, and I had no clue what was going on. I felt very powerless over all the medical issues. She wouldn't eat, and I was not my aunt that would sit there for four hours and be like, you know, to my mom, you have to eat, you have to drink something, and sit there with a straw and stuff. You know, I would do it for 45 minutes, and then she would fight me, and I'd just be like, then don't eat, mom. Like, if you're not gonna eat, if you're not gonna help yourself, and she would get frustrated, and so then she would say to me, um, I 
so bad I want to talk about Monster Calls because it was like such an important lesson at the end about how I felt that I did feel guilty about it, but I quickly let go of that feeling. But that book just deals with it so appropriately. Um, but my mom would say to me, like, I could be there. I just couldn't be there. Does that make sense? Like, I just, I felt consumed by it. And um, so she would say to me, can you please just sit here with me for a moment while I eat? And then will you watch a little bit of a TV show with me? And she goes, Peter, if you just want to go downstairs, if I can just hear you moving around in the house, I won't feel so all alone. She goes, I have eaten my meals together for 40 years by myself. I don't like eating alone. She was like, if I could just know that somebody else is in the house or moving around, just wait till I fall asleep and then you can leave. And I would do that. And, um, cause she just didn't want to be alone. You know, I understand that. Like, I understand that not wanting to be alone. I told Alex today, I said, you know, he was like, I passed, so I finally passed 50,000 subscribers. I'm kind of a little afraid to get excited about it because the last time I passed, like, a number, which was, like, 40,000, I think, I, like, lost some very quickly. And so, like, I don't want to be like, oh, look at me, I'm so arrogant, and then I lose 200 like that, you know? Um, but he was like, that's so incredible. You know, he was like, I'm so happy for you, Peter. And I was like, it is. I said, you know, the weird thing is, is I said, like, I don't talk to anybody. Like, if I don't talk to Dustin, my friend, you know, Dustin Daly on YouTube, if I don't talk to Dustin throughout the day, or, like, Tanya's not in town, or, like, my cousin Caroline, she rarely texts me. I mean, maybe once a week or every two weeks. Or Melissa. Like, Melissa and I don't talk that much on the phone. Like, we make plans to go see each other, and we'll see each other for, like, six hours one night, but then I don't see her for another week or two, three, you know? Like, my phone goes all day. No texts, no phone calls all day except for from Alex. If none of those people text me. Which they don't. You know, Tony gets busy and Melissa's busy and people are busy. And, and I said, you know, it's really weird because, like, I think I have this persona that people think that I just have, like, hundreds and hundreds of people, like, constantly. It just isn't the case. I live a lonely life, you know? And, um... I said that to him, and he said, but we've spent so much time together lately. And I said, sweetie, I said, I don't expect you for one second to be responsible for all of my... You're not my babysitter. We had a great time this weekend. We spent Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday together. He's not my babysitter, you know? He's not. We've spent a lot of time together this summer. And... Um, you know, he works 10, 12 hour days. I don't expect him to come home and babysit me. I'm a 45 year old grown man, you know? But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't like to have some people that like text me throughout the day or call or whatever, you know? It was funny because that Crystal from Drag Showdown, she and I were texting like way late last night and I was sending her drag clips of some of my favorite drag uh talent performances and pageants and she was sending me stuff and I was like I kind of miss this kind of like I haven't had this friendship in a long time you know and Dustin very much for me is that gay friend that I can just joke with and you know kiki and laugh and be like hey girl what's up you know but like we get very emotional with each other too and we share some very deep emotional things and you know he's been just such an amazing friend to me and Wish it translated more onto his channel what an, an amazing human being he is and it, it does in some of his videos but I think like you see it in like his car vlogs but like he is very like when he sits down like I always tell him I'm like Dustin be yourself be who you are when I talk to you on the phone at night because we talk for like two hours every night you know and um he's like I know he's like but I sometimes it's hard and blah 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 I mean, Dustin, and I will link his channel below if you guys don't know who I'm talking about. Dustin Daly is one of the most hilarious, genuinely nice, compact. He would do anything. If I called him right now and I said, girl, I'm going through it. I need you to come here. He would figure out a way and he'd be here. I know that. We've never even met in person, you know, which is crazy to me. You know, like I've talked to him every day since January. We haven't even met. And I think I love that about the social, like, the life of social media and online life. I, I do. I used to think it was corny and stupid, but I get it now, you know? Like, I get that friendship 
like surpasses having to see somebody in person. You know what I mean? Like we, we make plans, we've made plans to meet and we want to do that. But like, we always joke that if we live in the same town, we drive around and, you know, get fountain cokes together and stuff like that. And we would, but we don't. I mean, he lives in North Carolina and I live in Indiana. It's like that, you know, Prince of Tides, when he drives over the bridge at the end, he said, if for every man there were two lives. I think about that a lot. You know what I would do differently? It would be nice if I had some friends that lived around here like that, you know? But... And then the other thing that's really scary is when, I, I think some people might relate to this, is when I get used to being alone, you know? Like, I get used to my phone not texting and all that kind of stuff. And then it's only when I have a weekend, like I have this weekend, where we're with Melissa and Jason, and, you know, we're, you know, I'm with Alex the whole weekend, and I'm busy, 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 that I realize on the, the downfall of it, it's like the come down from drugs, you know? It's like on Monday, then I realize, you, but, but you ain't got nothing going on except, you know? And, um, and that's why it's very easy for me to throw myself into my videos and writing because I love doing that. I'm so passionate about it that I can just throw myself into it and then I kind of forget the rest. And I love that, you know, it's just, um, I don't know, YouTube's such a cool thing. I feel so blessed that I found YouTube, you know, like, because like, it's so funny. Like, when I'm in my live streams or I'm reading my Snapchat or tweets and stuff, like, I know you guys now. Like, I know who you are. Like, and I even have, like, with some of you, like, I have kind of, like, imaginary lives for you. I'm not, like, I don't mean, like, I sit here and go, oh, Tia, you know, like, what her life must look like. I mean, but, like, I do very much kind of have this idea of, like... You know, I don't know, especially since like the you now, the like the live stream. Oh, by the way, I'm doing a you now live stream super pajama party on Friday from eight, seven or eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time till ten or eleven. It's gonna be like three hours, two or three hours. But um, oh my god, I'm at 29 minutes. I gotta stop this, or it's just gonna cut me off. I can't believe I talked that long. Anyway. But, like, you know, Autumn, Tia, like, there's, like, I don't know. There's a ton of you that I feel like just from your Snapchats and your tweets and everything that, like, I know who you guys are now, you know? And it's not just them. It's, like, I mean, I could tell you guys people that, like, you've never seen in the comment sections or whatever, but they'll Snapchat me out regularly. It's, like, you know, or they'll, like, send me messages on Twitter, you know? Like, it seems like each person has their own thing that they're more comfortable using. And it's been such a cool thing. Like, I never, that was the one thing. Thing that I never expected from YouTube. I never, ever, ever, I mean, I expected make videos, maybe some people watch them, um, this kind of stuff. I mean, I never did, re I never, I was thinking about this today, I was looking at a video that I had. I think like one of my most viewed videos was like a Jeffree Star video that I did that like 180,000 plus people or 190,000 people have watched. I literally was sitting there and I thought to myself, I thought 190,000 motherfuckers out there have watched your video, your video, where you're sitting there talking about foolishness, your video. Like that is crazy town to me, 190,000 people, okay? And I don't think a lot of YouTubers that are younger really grasp that, okay? That kind of power and impact that you have on somebody. And I have like only really gotten that in the last month or two. Now my videos don't, mo don't most of them don't get that many views. Most of my videos get 5,000 and I'm happy about that. It's about 10% of my viewers, you know? But that's 5,000? That's still a lot of, that's a hell of a lot of people watching a video, you know? And I have the ability in that video to say things that could impact somebody positively or impact somebody negatively. And so I try to choose to say things that I really truly believe in my heart that will impact people positively. And I think that is what the Wolf Pack, what we're all about, the people that watch my videos and me, is that you know we're all about educating ourselves, remaining teachable, and being more positive. Just on as in towards life, not towards just people, but towards life, you know, like being more positive about outcomes and outlooks on life and you know, whatever. And uh and when we get heated about something, saying we're heated about it, but not having to come for somebody's throat to say, this is why you're wrong. I'm going to educate you. Here is what it should have looked like, you know? And, and that's okay to do that, you know? 
we don't have to call people names and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know, but the interaction with all of you guys, that is one thing, like, I never, like, if, I think if you had said to me, like, two years ago, okay, so, if you're on YouTube and you, you know, somewhat successful, like, what do you think that'll look like? I think first I would have thought about money, <laughs> which is such a joke that I would have, like, ever thought that successful on YouTube equals money. Maybe for the people that have millions, but not for us. And then I think I would have thought about sponsorships, which I don't get many of. <laughs> I think I'm a scary one for sponsorships. And then I think I would have thought, like, what does it mean being successful on YouTube make? You know, I mean, like, having a shit ton of, like, fans. But, like, I don't see anybody as a... I mean, I, I don't, like... I don't know. You guys share so many, many intimate things with me about your own life and what you're going through. And, you know, it was interesting because somebody sent me a very endearing message and um, about needing counseling for something. They sent it to me on Snapchat. And I sent a very short response because I get a lot of messages like that about mental health issues and addiction and whatever. And I try to be as real as possible, but when the situation seems to me like somewhat like kind of critical, not critical, but like when it seems to me like they need more professional help, it's negligent of me to try to solve that problem through Snapchat. And I said to them, you know, I think this is something that you should really contact your family physician for or whatever. And I think they took it kind of the wrong way. And, you know, I read my response back and I totally understand why they would take it the wrong way. It was, it was short, you know, but it's hard because like, I feel so close to you guys. I want to help you. And I want to say these things to you that I think will change you, but at the same time, like, I don't want to be somebody that's going to lead you in the wrong direction. That's using my power inappropriately. You know, that's using the fact that you trust me inappropriately. And I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with anybody doing that. So my job is to, you know, tell you, you need to find some professional help. And here are the resources to go find that. And I, and I don't ever want anybody to think that I'm like, putting them off when I do that. That's me actually caring a lot and saying, find help that's appropriate. Like me through Snapchat, that ain't it, you know? But then other people, and then I, but then I've sat there, I was trying to think of like what, because I did respond to her and I haven't seen if she responded back. I am so tired of this computer, or this computer, this phone constantly shutting itself off. Okay, so what I was saying was about this woman that reached out to me. And I hope she didn't take it the wrong way and I sent her back a message that I hope explained it. Um, I love reading your messages. When you guys reach out to me and tell me very endearing stories about grief that you're going through or, I mean, <clears throat> I don't want to say this person's name, but somebody's mother passed away and literally that night shared it with me. And I cannot even tell you felt so honored that somebody would share that with me, you know? People share with me their stories of going through their own addiction and how they can't stop. People share with me on a daily basis, you know, going through breakups or going through relationships. Somebody just said to me the other day that they saved my video about how to get through a breakup until when they knew they would need it, and then they just recently watched it and it helped them. I cannot explain to you what that means to me. I love reading the stories. I sometimes feel like I can't give the appropriate answers over social media or even in an email. But if you need to just write it down somewhere, if you need to just tell somebody, I read everything, okay? I, I have read every email. So if I haven't responded to you, I apologize. It probably means it, it was one of the days I got 50, 50 emails. It may mean it was one of the days that I just looked up. I'm sorry, but I have read every email, every Snapchat, every Twitter DM, I've read them all. If I missed you, DM me again, email me again, snap me again, and, I, and say, you missed my email, I didn't hear back from you, and I will respond, I promise you. Um, because I try to be really diligent about that. And um, if you just need a place to write it, I'm here for you, okay? If you just need to tell somebody, I'm having a shit day today, I know there's nothing, Peter, that you can do about it, I just needed to tell somebody, I'm here for you, okay? I love getting messages like that. Just know that through social media, I can't fix it. I wish I could. I wish I could take a wand and fix everybody else's life out there, but I can't even do that with my own life. There are things in my own life that I wish I could fix that I can't, you know? And I think sometimes, and this is a 12-step thing for me, finding power and strength in your own life is surrendering to those things you have, know you have none of, you know? And, um... 
And I, I think that's where the real strength comes in life is in knowing what we can't control. But that doesn't mean that we don't need to talk about it. You know, somebody was talking to me today about like they started their own you now channel because they want to talk about mental health issues and relationships on there. And I said, well, girl, that's kind of a hard sell. You know, I don't know that most people will want to come on there and talk about that. They'll be afraid, you know. But in the privacy of their own home, snapping me or t sending me an email, it's safe. So I feel honored when you guys do that to me. It means a lot to me. Please continue it. This vlog has gone in 400 different directions. I don't know. I guess what I'm just trying to say is I never thought I'd fucking make it to 200 days of vlogging, first of all. I just, I looked at that number today on my computer when I put it up there and I was like, are you kidding me? 200 days I've made it. Like, that's pretty incredible, Peter. Um, that's kind of like a personal success that I've had, you know, that I have made it through 200 days and then I don't plan on stopping ever. Like, I joke about it on my main channel now. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to stop this channel. Um, I do think that in 2018, I'll make some shorter vlogs because people have a hard time catching up. So I'll probably do a long one, a short one, a long one, a short one, things like that. That way to mix it up a little bit. Um, but I love the vlog long ones. I love just talking and sharing my life on here, you know? And it's kind of like a written, like a verbal diary, <laughs> vomiting diary, diary of the mouth diary. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But um, I love it. It's like, you know, my, my video diary. And I love every bit of it. And, and you guys make it priceless for me. You really do. If I was just making this video and putting it out there in the world and no one was responding to it, you know, I would still have all of the memories, all of the talk. It, it would still mean a lot to me. You guys have enriched that experience so much by making me reflect on my life and the things that I say about it, you know? And that's pretty powerful. Like, that's pretty cool. Even the small things, when I share little things about my mom or my dad or Alex, you know, and sometimes I sit back and it will be just like one little, don't ever think about not commenting on my videos. If you like to, if you like to comment, no matter what the comment you think is, leave it long, short, whatever. I don't care. I love them. I read them. And I can tell you sometimes it's just one word that somebody says in a comment or it's one sentence that somebody says that stands out to me. And I'm like, wow, you know, like... And sometimes I read it on a day where I'm like, I need to be shook with gratitude because Peter, you're full of yourself today. Or, you know, like you're feeling pitiful and you have it really good, you know? And, and some days I read on there where people are like, oh, like it would be awesome to be married to Peter. And I want to go, yeah, Alex, see, you should read these comments. And then there's other days on there where I read them and people say like, Alex is so patient with Peter. And I think, you know what? they're right. And I learn a lot from the comments about myself, you know, and it's incredible. And, um, I just think it's the coolest thing ever. And if you're thinking about starting a vlog channel, start it. It doesn't have to be on January 1st. Start it tomorrow. Do it whatever. Just record yourself talking, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that's it for tonight because this is going to go super long already. I hope this will all fit in an hour. I said it was going to be short, and look, I always say that. I say it's going to be short, and then it ends up being an hour long. So I apologize for the hour long videos. But um, I know some of you guys like them, but some of them, it drives you crazy. Anyway, I love you guys, and <laughs> what was this? I love you guys, <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.